Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a good rest. Welcome to the Malaysian Architecture Education Online Lecture Series, proudly presented by MASA. This lecture is entitled Architecture and Travel by This lecture is entitled Architecture and Travel by Abdul Muluk bin Abdul Manan. Thank you for joining us today. For those who are new, MASA stands for Malaysia Architecture Students Alliance. It is a non-profit student committee acting directly under PAM, also known as Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia. And it consists of student representatives from all architecture institutions in Malaysia. During this time of RMCO, MASA and PAM have decided to launch this online lecture series for students to be more productive and gain more insight. Architect Adrianta is the head of PAM Education and Dr. Zach Zairo is the convener. There will, be, there will be more series coming up after this one, so do keep in touch with MASA's Instagram and Facebook page. My name is Jenna Lansing, a MASA representative from UPM, and I will be your MC for today. Now, I would like to introduce our speaker, Mr. Abdul Muluk bin Abdul Manan. And Sheikh Abdul Muluk graduated from University Technology Mara, UITM Shah Alam, with a diploma in architecture or LAM Part 1 in 1990 and an advanced diploma in architecture, also known as LAM Part 2, in 1995. Since then, he has worked for several companies holding various positions from design and project architect to project manager. Although an architect by profession, he is also an active trainer, lecturer, and researcher. On many occasions, he was invited as design critic panels for UIA, UITM, UM, UKM, UPM, IUKL, UCSI, and Taylor's University. He also occasionally gives lessons on architecture and its history to tourist guides from Selangor and Kuala Lumpur Tourist Guides Association. He joined University Tunku Abdul Rahman also known as UTAR, in May of 2014, and currently pursuing his PhD at University Kebangsaan Malaysia, UKM, while continuing his position as a specialist in UTAR. He has extensive architectural traveling experience and has traveled to part of Asia, Australia, Europe, and Africa, collecting data for his personal and collaborative research projects. He has presented several research papers based on his research projects at seminars and workshops in various countries, including Masiana Conference in Jakarta, International Education Asian Architects in the Academy Conference UAP of the Philippines in Manila, a conference in Jaipur, India, and as a speaker at the second WUICACE UNWAR Bali on tourism infrastructure development. He is a member of Lembaga Architect Malaysia and Majlis Akreditas, Akreditasi Pengajian Seni Bina, the National Accreditation Body for Architectural Education. He is also an active member of Pertubuhan Arch Architect Malaysia, HAM Education Committee, and has been appointed convener of various PAM programs and competitions, including the annual PAM Architecture Students' Work Exhibition. Recently, he was appointed as a non-corporate PAM Council member. Now, I am sure that after such a long introduction, Encik Muluk is itching to begin, and everybody is looking forward to the lecture. Please remember that we will have a Q&A session at the end of the talk, and if you have any questions, feel free to type them down in the chat box so we can attend to them at the end of the sharing. That is all from me, Mr. Abdul Muluk. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the very long uh, 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 Thank you for coming to uh, my talk. This is not, uh, I'm trying to organize this talk in such a way that it doesn't sound like a lecture because today being a Sunday, so I don't think it's an, uh, a nice day. It is more like a sharing session, uh, sharing my experience 
um, about traveling. So that's why the title of the talk is very open-ended. I mean, it's very general uh, because I'm going to cover uh, only certain things uh, about traveling, uh, especially uh, for students. Okay. Uh, an insight into the lifestyle of various people and those observing that proves beneficial in making architecture human-centric uh, while giving a sense of direction to thoughts on how to vary the present design for a future one. Uh, traveling open doors to timeless architecture. So I think uh, all of us know by now that uh, in order for you to be a good designer, you need to travel and look at how are the designers or how are the architects uh, design uh, their work? That's one thing. And you also need to learn about uh, uh, human uh, behavior because we are designing for human beings. So, you know, uh, the limited number of human interaction that we uh, have daily will not be enough for us to learn everything uh, uh, for the needs of our design uh, development. So that's why we need to travel. And to travel is to make a journey. But what uh, would a journey be if the traveler doesn't grow through it? Uh, wouldn't that equal to just moving from one place to the other without really gathering anything? It certainly would. Uh, so that's why as an architect, we are not uh, the same like tourists. You know, when we travel, we don't um, do like what tourists did where usually uh, they travel to a, a spot or a building or a landmark just to take some selfies, you know, just to uh, go up at the building and then quickly move to the next destination. So as an architect, I think we shouldn't do that because uh, we need to uh, really uh, understand and also uh, have more immersive experience uh, in, a sp uh, in a place. Okay, and when we are talking about traveling to explore architecture, it becomes imperative that an architecture student must learn that traveling becomes analog to growing in their world. Okay, in this photo, you can see there are two photos here. One is the uh, uh, casino in Karachi, Pakistan, which is no longer there. I think they have demolished it. Uh, and then the second one is a pyramid. Uh, you know that as an architecture student, we learn about history of architecture. Sometimes we look at photographs, uh, uh, we couldn't really get a three-dimensional uh, feel of how the uh, structure or how the buildings look like. So that's why it's very important that uh, we go and see for ourselves and experience it uh, to appreciate it. So that's, that's why I think that uh, uh, why uh, architect travel. Okay, uh, the second slide, uh, uh, why architect must travel? So this one, um, more emphasis on must travel. So, you know, I've, I think that an architect who do not travel uh, have a very limited uh, 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 understanding on uh, the needs of certain segment of uh, uh, society. You know, when they, especially when they come to design a uh, public building. Yeah? Okay, I'll, I'll list down eight things uh, that a reason for architects uh, to travel. You know, uh, the first thing being um, sit and observe. Uh, sit and observe meaning that whenever you travel, inevitably you will spend a lot of time uh, at airports, at transportation terminals, you know, waiting for your flight. Uh, this can take five, six hours sometimes, you know, uh, waiting. And then the, the flight itself will take like another, you know, another few hours. So uh, if you are an architect or students of architecture, you shouldn't be wasting your time by, you know, browsing through your phones or something like that. But what you need to do is just sit and observe uh, the going, uh, I mean here by sit and observe. 
And then the second one is connecting with people having varied interests. Uh, number three, history, culture, and folklore. Uh, number four, similarities and differences. Later, I'm going to explain it more detail in the next slides. Uh, architecture of simplicity. Uh, rural and urban fabric study. Architects and their works. And mother nature. And when we are talking about traveling to explore architecture, it becomes imperative that an architecture student must learn that traveling becomes analogs to growing in the world. Okay, the first one is uh, sit and observe. Uh, most of the journey begin with a hour long uh, wait at public transportation hubs and give us architect a chance to just sit and observe. Uh, being stranded innumerable times at airports while waiting for flights, uh, I realized that we are wired to, we tend to observe the smallest of things, become aware of several uh, energy spheres that surround us, and this exchange energy that is exciting. Uh, this is a preventing all the, uh, sorry, this is a prevalent in all the hubs where we get to see the frequency of people zooming in and out. Uh, talking, killing time, hurrying, laughing, anxious, uh, busy tugging along kids uh, with them and taking up business calls, uh, talking loudly with friends, relatives, uh, window shopping, browsing through magazines, uh, and etc. There's many, many things that happen uh, in, a, in an airport. Eh? Uh, especially uh, airport nowadays, like uh, Singapore Changi Airport, it doesn't. It is not only a mere transportation hub, but has been transformed into, uh, you know, uh, like a city uh, by itself or a destination by itself. Uh, we have everything going uh, on at the same time in the same place, and uh, the poise points when we just sit and observe and can teach us a lot about people. Uh, their behavior, their activities, and the atmosphere. Uh, 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 and because you know, this is where you observe, they come in various sizes, you know, not all are similar like this. Uh, uh, that also teach us about how they sit at the public area, uh, their anthropometrics, uh, circulation, we can observe uh, where uh, things are well designed and uh, where things are not uh, well designed. Eh? And then when we reach our hotel, same things also, we can observe uh, the goings on in our own hotel. And of course, the last one, uh, food culture. Uh, whenever we go, uh, we travel, we always uh, come across a new kind of food that uh, we, maybe we are not familiar with. Okay, uh, in the photo, you can see uh, the, uh, the first photo is actually uh, an airport in Taiwan. Uh, you can see uh, like uh, feel with people uh, uh, that trying to queue uh, 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 through the immigration uh, process. So, uh, you know, you can hear many languages spoken, uh, you know, uh, people are trying to look for their, their loved ones around the crowd and things like that. Eh? and some are trying to figure out the entry requirement to the countries. So all this you can observe. And at the same time, you look at the architecture of this airport, the curved uh, roof for the, uh, for the terminal, the airport terminal, also is an interesting site for you to uh, uh, observe. And other modes of transportation, like whenever I travel, I always uh, use public transportation. I go on buses, uh, I go on, uh, uh, you know, uh, boats, ferry, whenever you travel uh, in some of the area. And when you travel, you also taste the local food. Uh, so, and then you can, uh, while doing that, I mean, like the photo shows that I'm um, sitting at the roadside there, uh, having coffee with some local Vietnamese. Uh, you know, it's a culture in Vietnam to sit a very low stool by the roadside drinking coffee because they are uh, they have a very uh, interesting coffee culture in in Vietnam cities um, and of course uh, eating round tables at uh, one of my host homes in Hanoi uh, uh, we uh, eat 
the uh, it's like a, a traditional food of uh, uh, Vietnamese people. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, connecting with people uh, having varied interests. Uh, the first one is the people that have same interest with us, like an architect. You know, usually when you travel to attend conference or you attend architecture uh, gatherings, uh, these are people with the same interest, like architects. You know? But you don't, uh, you also meet with uh, people who have different interests. Eh? Uh, like uh, other professionals maybe, you know, or just uh, 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 other people. Eh? Uh, the moment we bank on journeys, we brush across uh, people, uh, may it be from our own group or unknown people headed to the same destination, yet having a plethora of stories and experiences to share in an environment that's away from the routine and daily hustle bustle. Uh, that detachment from the comfort zone builds on to a complete a riot of unforgettable incidents fascinating experiences and innumerable moments which are spent together in a different place, in a different zone, amidst different people eating varieties of food, sharing number of talks, laughing, and etc. There's a lot of things that happen. Eh? So uh, as from my experience here, the top photo, you can see that uh, uh, photo of uh, me hanging out with some uh, new friends that I've met in Sydney. Uh, uh, you know, uh, walking around and also international conference in Lahore, Pakistan. There, these are the students from Asian countries, from Philippines, from Japan, from Korea, and uh, some uh, the some of the photo shows that uh, some invited me to their home. Uh, that photo in the middle there you can see me eating on the floor with uh, my uh, newfound Bangladeshi friend uh, uh, I mean the, the the food is being sent to us to their house uh, and also the photo of me at Jian city with the backdrop of that uh, drum tower at the back uh, at the back uh, uh, she actually uh, volunteered to show me around because she want to learn how to speak English I guess this happened quite a lot. Huh? When, I, when you travel to Vietnam, when you travel to Cambodia, Thailand, you'll find someone uh, from the park. Sometimes, you know, students come and approach you and want to have a conversation with you uh, because they need to practice their English. Yeah? And then the last photo, uh, me with my host uh, from Bangladesh, uh, she treat me to a very uh, uh, fancy restaurant in Bangladesh. Uh, showing uh, traditional uh, food. Eh? Okay, I put that number three, total strangers. Uh, to me, strangers are friends that you have not met yet. <laughs> so that's my, uh, how I look at strangers, meaning that they are friends that we have not met yet. So once we've met, we will become friends. So these are the attitude that I personally have. Eh? Whenever I've met someone who I don't know, I don't treat them as a, uh, I mean like, they are strangers initially, of course, but then if you met them, you'll become friends. Eh? That's how I met all these people uh, throughout my journey. Uh, I'm, you know, I've benefited a lot from this uh, encounter because like I said, uh, this friend in Sydney, you know how expensive it is to stay in Sydney if you stay in a hotel, so instead of staying in a hotel, you stay at his house. So you save on uh, uh, accommodation costs. So you can stay longer in that places. Eh? Uh, same also like uh, uh, when you are in Jian, China. Uh, of course, you have to pay if you want to have a tour guide to go and guide you around. But when you are traveling with the local friends, I mean like we are someone that you've met and you make friends with them, they take you around without any additional charges, you know. So these are the another advantage of uh, uh, making friends uh, along the way when you're traveling. Okay. Uh, the the third one is history, culture, and folklore. Huh? World history, of course, all of us learn about world history, 
we want to immerse ourselves with uh, uh, history. Sometimes, you know, it is uh, very important for us to experience it rather than just learning it from textbook. You know, uh, our world has been a billion years old and always been a, a pot full of intriguing stories, folklore, kingdoms, battles, uh, changing borders lands, water bodies, as well as housing, an insane number of fascinating creatures, eh? flora and fauna. To be able to visit and behold these marvels at the location of their origins uh, is itself an amazing experience. Eh? In this photo, you can see uh, uh, one of my uh, road trip in Vietnam. I managed to watch like uh, uh, traditional games being played on the uh, on 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 the waterway there you know uh the mekong river uh using bamboo uh i remember uh, seeing similar games being played in my hometown uh, but this kind of games uh, we don't we, we don't play it anymore you know but uh because the simplicity uh, of their lifestyle maybe they still continue to have this kind of festival uh, in their small town there and then the second photo you see there there's a grand mosque of Xi'an. Uh, Jian used to be part of the Silk Route. Uh, you know, I think uh, for some of you who do not know what Silk Route is, is where the trade from China to the uh, to Europe, uh, they pass through uh, Central Asia, and Jian, being a city in the center of China, is uh, 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 one of the important cities uh, on the uh, Silk Route. And as you can see, this uh, Grand Mosque was built. Um, about 150 years after the uh, uh, Islam come to this world uh, via uh, Prophet Muhammad and you know how fast uh, tradition travels from uh, Middle East to Central China. Uh, so this of course there's a lot of other fascinating stories uh, behind uh, uh, Xi'an being also the city of the terracotta warrior you know uh, there's a lot of folklore behind it, uh, historical facts, and also some uh, legends that come uh, together with it. Eh? And then there's the other photo is the uh, 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 a building in Canton, a house actually, in Canton City in the Mekong Delta. And the last photo is uh, uh, a town in Taiwan, I think in Taichung, Taiwan, uh, where you can see it's a night market, entrance into a night market in Taichung, Taiwan. So these are all the interesting things that you come across when you travel. Eh? The space in and around the historical structure, the details and the beauty personified. So you can actually spend hours and hours just observing uh, human behavior, uh, you observing architecture at the same time. Of course, we as an architect, we always like to watch architecture. Uh, like for example, this gateway, eh? the uh, Grand Mosque in Xi'an gateway, made of timber, hundreds of years old, and uh, you know the intricate carvings, and how they uh, manage to blend the traditional Chinese architecture into a, a mosque uh, that was built uh, hundreds of years ago. Okay, uh, you always with similarities and differences. Okay, um, of lifestyle, rituals, culture, and environment. Like I mentioned just now, I I try to compare the lifestyle that we used to have when we were uh, uh, small. I, know, I mean, like when we were little, as compared to uh, now. Uh, so you know, uh, the uh, traveling to different countries enable us to draw parallel between the different places and thus compare the different way of life different responses to the environment and ultimately different perspective of living. Um, uh, within the country too, we can start comparing uh, the landscape, cityscape, the similarities and dissimilarities among various cities. For example, uh, what was surprising throughout the journey, uh, you know, uh, in China, I've, I've given example just now, uh, a grand mosque in Xi'an. And the other photo you can see that that is actually a mosque in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Kyrgyzstan also is part of the Silk Route. Uh, uh, Kyrgyzstan is next to Kazakhstan. 
used to be part of the uh, uh, United uh, USSR, but now they are an independent uh, country. Uh, uh, locate they they are also uh, dubbed as the Switzerland of Central Asia eh, because they they are located on 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 mountains. And as you can see, there there are some similarities between the design of the mosque in Kazakhstan and mosque in. Uh, sorry, mosque in Kyrgyzstan and mosque in uh, Xi'an, China. And also there are differences. So this I mean, I mean uh, what I mean by similarities and differences. And uh, the other photo also show you the yurt where, yurt, uh, they call it yurt. <coughs> uh, where the uh, people, uh, the nomad, nomadic people in Kyrgyzstan live. Huh? This uh, yurt uh, will be built uh, during the winter uh, when they want to uh, stay in one particular area but it also can be packed you know uh, dismantled and packed move to another places uh, because that's the nature of their uh, life uh, being nomad uh, uh, nomad uh, culture so you can observe this in Kyrgyzstan as well uh, there's also uh, some similarities in uh, northern China uh, Mongolia so there are similar similar uh, yet uh, but maybe the detailings are slight, slightly different. And uh, this is what I mean by the similarities and differences. Huh? Environment, of course, you can see the difference of environment between all these different countries and also culture. Architecture of simplicity. So this uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, when you... Uh, when you are in a set, uh, different uh, countries, you tend to uh, see uh, some very complicated and intricate uh, architecture. But at the same time, you can also compare that with the simplicity of uh, life. Eh? For example, like my uh, tour to Brussels in Belgium, eh? Near the Grand Marketplace, the Gestapos of the extravagant and splendid Baroque and Gothic structure, architecture was also in the simplest of things. The narrow streets uh, shaking their way with uh, three-story buildings stacked tightly on both sides uh, offered a diverse palette of views with every turn that I look. So that's what I mean by, you know, uh, simplicity in terms of the streetscape, the building facade, even though the details are very rich, but you can also see the simplicity behind it, light and shadow. You can see the changing of the light play on the street and also uh, various architecture features. Eh? And uh, being on foot, uh, every corner presents something unique to pause and appreciate. When the scale of the streetscape changes, the proportion change completely. And in this photo, um, you know, when I was walking along the Darling Harbour in Sydney, I can see the view of the uh, Sydney Bridge from a different angle than what we used to see uh, in photos. Eh? So that's also another thing that you can discover when you're traveling. You can see uh, things from a different angle. Eh? And then this is a, like a, a suburb in Sydney. I think it's near, uh, I can't remember what's the name of, name of the town where I stay. Well, like I mentioned just now, I stay with a friend. So I'm not staying in the city center. So this is also uh, give you a chance to observe the lifestyle in the suburb, you know, some buildings uh, uh, which is uh, built at a more human scale rather than the uh, building that are built in the city where uh, sometimes it can be uh, overwhelmingly uh, out of scale or out of proportion. Yeah? Okay. And then you can compare between rural and urban, eh? sense of place, uh, sense enter premises. The transition compel you to understand the simple life and day-to-day -day life, zooming out and focusing over entire cities, stretching out below in front of you in the marvelous sight, indeed, fulfilling uh, secrets. As you can see in this photo, there are two con uh, contrasts, which is located in the same city. Uh, both photos as, uh, yeah, in, is in, uh, from Japan. Uh, one is in Osaka, I think uh, Osaka train station, if I'm second, that photo was taken in, uh, uh, in, in uh, Kyoto. 
you know that Kyoto are more traditional and more uh, uh, so you can see the uh, people Kyoto uh, they, they they are not dressed like that because of tourists eh? uh, don't uh, uh, they, they 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 are dressed like that because they are dressed like that because you know uh, in Kyoto they try to preserve their uh, traditional of way of life. Uh, some of the students uh, uh, who came to visit this place because other parts of Japan, you know, like maybe they are coming from Tokyo or they're coming from uh, 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 Osaka. Uh, and then when they come to Kyoto, being a, a traditional city, they rent the, uh, the, the, the dresses. Eh? You can rent the clothes to uh, to blend with the local people there and then before you go uh, before you leave you uh, return back the the dress eh? so uh, that's a very uh, interesting for you to observe urban and rural and all the fabrics uh, 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 that associated with uh, with both uh, side of the uh, country yeah and then architects and their works. Of course, this is actually main reason why uh, we travel. We want to see uh, a work of famous architect eh? uh, and also ancient monument. Like just now, I show you the pyramids, um, uh, ancient monuments like uh, uh, Taj Mahal. You want to see uh, the Fatehpur Sikri uh, city, which was abandoned by the Mughals. Uh, you know, these are some of the ancient monuments and master architects. You want to see uh, uh, the work of uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. You want to see the work of uh, Le Corbusier eh? uh, and uh, other master architects and contemporary uh, architects like uh, uh, Zaha Hadi. Uh, like in this photo, you can see IMP eh, on top, and then the museum that was designed by Toyo Ito. Uh, uh, the museum uh, that museum was located in Taichung, Taiwan. Uh, actually, both both buildings are actually in uh, tai, uh, Taichung, Taiwan. Uh, the uh, the temp uh, sorry the church was located in uh, in a university, Tunghai University, uh, where we were doing uh, our projects, uh, a joint studio at that time. So we were quite fortunate that we were able to enter into the uh, building and view this uh, uh, magnificent building. Eh? Uh, the excitement in witnessing the master architect works with our own eyes cannot be spelled. The manifestation of studying their work and philosophies, drawing their sketches during our school in front of us in reality does make the travel worth it. Uh, as an architect, you know, uh, when I was a student last time, we learned uh, the first book that we uh, read, uh, the Decaging book, remember? In the Decaging book, uh, that uh, taught us the basic principles of architecture like from dot go to line line go to shape shape goes to form you know uh, and all these things you learn about proportion you know when they draw it on a roman uh, roman column you know, the roman order and things like that so you know learning it is one thing but observing it viewing it touching it is another thing it's another level of feeling so that's why we need to travel and we need to experience all these things that we've learned in our uh, studio uh, uh, in person eh? uh, nature the last one is of course nature colors texture architecture of nature architecture of nature is meaning that the the, uh, the god being the creator of the uh, the whole world so he's the you know they create everything for a reason and you know sometimes we try to emulate nature by uh, choosing certain principle to become our concept in design so it's good for us if we can go and observe all these places uh, you know uh, being with nature just build onto the relationship which we forgot in our hustle the magical silence that developed because of this one has always compelled us to travel more. Travel to get daily life off by source of our creation. So that's uh, that's uh, the first part of my talk, which I think, you know, why do architects travel? These are the things that we observe.
<laughs> these are the things that we will benefit from uh, when we travel and when we come back we can uh, we can uh, always uh, you know maybe uh, uh, incorporate some of these things into our uh, design work okay uh, the next part of my talk i'm going to share with you how to travel like an architect so this is according to my opinion eh? how to travel like an architect like i mentioned just now we don't travel like tourists you know if you just go like in package tour and all that you know probably you you, you will not benefit uh, uh you do, will not uh, gain most benefit from your travel so this is our i think that uh how uh, to travel like an architect first make a list of your favorite architectural work okay this one i think while you are all of your students uh, when you come across certain uh, precedent study in your uh, research of uh, you know coming up with your design maybe you start listing down all these uh, favorite architectural work you know maybe you like zaha hadid you want to watch zaha hadid uh, you you want to see zaha hadid uh, work so then you make a list and uh, not the location work so you again not down what, what are the, so you make the list first this list can be either virtually you have a list in your uh in your phone or you, you have on how sophisticated is the uh, uh phone or your uh you know your gadget still have a hard copy with you you know like a notebook or a sketchbook with you to to do notes uh and sketches eh? number two is learn architecture photography okay this one i don't know whether uh it's been taught in your studio like in my case last time when i was a student in uitm we have a special uh, one uh one uh, uh, uh course that teach us how to take photograph you know how to uh, of course those days we don't have digital camera we use a manual camera <coughs> but nowadays uh, i mean uh, the new generations are more lucky I mean, yeah more easier for you to get access to this uh, gadget for you to take a pho uh, good photograph huh? but again sometimes the gadget is not useful if you don't know how to uh, uh, see uh, what are the things that you need to take uh, photos huh? so learn architecture photography architecture photography now can be learned online you can learn uh, via youtube you know there are many tutorials on how to take good photography and uh, or architecture photography uh, and then the next one is sketch or take notes of the architecture details this one i think many uh, many students when they travel they they, they didn't do this which i feel that it's a loss to them huh? i don't expect you to sit there and sketch for like more than uh, two hours but what you need to do is just take some important detailings you know and then take photograph and then in your free time when you return to uh, your studio you can uh, finish up your your uh, sketches eh? and as you can see here there's a, 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 a student that um, we take to visit Borobudur in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. We insist that you spend since you pay 20 US dollar to enter, you know, because this is the World Heritage uh, site. So of course the, you have to pay to enter the Borobudur. It's I can't remember. I think it's roughly about 20 US dollar. So make full use of it. Don't spend just like half an hour, take selfie, and then go back. Take some I mean, do some sketches. Talk to the locals, and you know. So, uh, I mean, this is what my student did there. They sit there, down there, do some sketches. We went there during the sunrise. We stayed there all the way until afternoon, you know, like almost three, four hours we spent at the site. Uh, because the uh, Borobudur is a wonderful monument that, you know, you do not want to miss any details and any part of the, this, this place. Then I'm just giving you an example. Huh? And then experiencing the building by observing and walking around okay walking around this is also another thing that a lot of students miss when they travel or a lot of people miss when they travel they just like to uh, maybe they're lazy or maybe they're you know they're not used to walk around so they they just like go, uh, go down the tour bus take photograph selfie and all that then go back uh, go up the bus and walk 
you will lose a lot of things if you don't walk around. Yeah? Uh, getting lost in a city is not uh, something which you need to be afraid of. Actually, that's what we need to do. We just walk around and getting lost. Now, this I think it's quite impossible to totally get lost because you have you always have your phone with you, and they can always on your Google Map and uh, find your location to go back to your hotel. So, in this uh, photo, I show you the uh, uh, wandering around in Xi'an city. You know, it's the uh, Muslim quarters they call it. I was quite surprised at that time to found out that. Jian, like half of Jian is actually the Muslim quarters. This is where the busiest part of Jian because it's the most touristy part because a lot of people, uh, not only foreign tourists, but also local uh, Chinese who came to this place because you know, of the variety of food that they have. You know, that's that, the photo of the food. Uh, you, uh, you know, because it's an influence of uh, not only Chinese food, you have, uh, you know, from Central Asia, from Middle East, they have pasta, they have, you know, you, you name it, they have it. So the, uh, because uh, Xi'an is located at the root, uh, uh, Silk Route, so these all different uh, influence that come into the uh, 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 So you have uh, a lot of uh, uh, things to do also in this, uh, this place by just walking around. Um, another, uh, another way of uh, saving the cost also, you know, when you walk instead of uh, taking bus or taking taxi or taking public transportation, when you walk, you tend to come across a lot more things, yeah? like uh, this park that I come across in Xi'an, which is not shown on any of the tourist map, but it's quite an interesting uh, place uh, to be. And then once you uh, have taken photograph or whatever, you share your journey uh, with your uh, contacts, eh, with your friends who are not there or, uh, you know, now this is very easy. You have social media, you share it on Facebook or you share, share it on your Instagram uh, for others to, uh, to see uh, what you are uh, able to share. This is part of the joy of uh, traveling as well, sharing your uh, traveling experience. Eh? Uh, Okay. Uh, uh, inspire your friends and family by sharing your architecture journey. Uh, talk about how your favorite architecture work make you feel and how it make them feel when they get to first hand experience it. And you could also start a blog, you know, for your architecture travel and inspire a lot of other people who are also interested in architecture. Uh, and also to help you uh, getting started with your blog, you can always start it by just uh, simply uploading your ex travel experience on your social media, uh, you know, like uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and also Twitter you have, you know, I don't have Twitter, but, you know, I am sure that uh, all of you now, are, or various others like TikTok or whatever uh, uh, new apps that uh, uh, come out with, huh? So at least it will be beneficial to you, uh, uh, to many, uh, rather than just uh, simply taking selfies and also some TikTok video for your uh, 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 TikTok account. Eh? Okay, now we move to the uh, uh, the uh, last part of the uh, uh, talk, which is how to travel how to travel you know that when you are traveling because this i i receive a lot of uh, queries from friends and uh, and, and also students you know how do you travel how do you manage your travel uh, you know because travel usually need a lot of money you know uh, so i'm going to share with you here uh, how to travel uh, cheap okay but before that I need to share with you how do I get to uh, travel the first time. Eh? When I was a student, it started way back in 1992. When I was a student doing my uh, Acacia Student Jamboree. You know, at that time uh, in uh, UITM, uh, my 
lecturer asked me to write an article to be submitted for uh, uh, for Acacia because Pam offer a travel scholarship. Uh, actually, that year, uh, Pam offer three travel scholarship. During that time, 1992, only three architecture uh, uh, school. Eh? One is USM, uh, second is UTM, third one is UITM. Eh? So uh, usually, uh, Pam going to sponsor uh, one student from each university, so three total three, to go to Acacia Student Jamboree. Uh, that year, it was held in Lahore, Pakistan. Eh? So that's uh, so I'm being I think my second uh, my first year I think my first year advanced diploma. So uh, you know. Uh, I think six of us was asked to write this article, and up only three submitted. Actually, student doses also just like similar. So me and the other two student uh, submitted. But uh, then the, the other two student just uh, tell me that uh, well, I don't want to go. You go. So <laughs> so that's how I I don't even you know need to put much effort on this to get that travel scholarship for uh, for my first ever travel traveling overseas. Eh? So I have to do my passport. I do to to. This is actually, uh, uh, you know, being ignorant about traveling and all that. You know, I come from a very small kampung, so uh, the most uh, we travel to Singapore. You know, Singapore you don't have. I mean, from I'm from so I think a border pass or something like that. Travel to Singapore, but this time around when I want to travel to Pakistan. Those days, uh, you know, uh, KLIA is not finished yet. We have to travel from Subang Airport. We will take a flight from Subang to Singapore. From Singapore, we take a flight to Karachi. From Karachi to Lahore. So that's actually a very long journey. It's almost 24 hours to, to, to reach that destination. Uh, but that's actually the first, uh, my first uh, tra uh, overseas travel. Eh? Um, of course, I've got that PAM Travel Scholarship. Uh, but to my surprise, when I reach Lahore, I was actually the only uh, students from Malaysia. The other two university, USM and UTM, the student didn't turn up. <laughs> didn't turn up. I think because of, uh, uh, it was a holiday at that time, so the student just uh, just do not want to go. But anyway, uh, because the winner of that competition, they have a competition at that time. The I was not the winner of the competition. The winner is actually from USM. So and I'm supposed to present because I'm representing Malaysia and these are actually entry from Malaysia. So I have to stand in front of the bots, you know, explaining like an expert as if that is my design, but actually it was done by the USM student, vertical farming. <laughs> so, so, you know, my first time presenting something which is not mine, but anyway, it's a very interesting experience that I had that, you know, uh, uh, of course, all the flight uh, are fully sponsored. And you know, whenever you travel with architects, that's uh, you know, uh, all your meals are also being paid for by architects. I remember first time meeting Picasso, uh, meeting with uh, Jimmy Lim, architect Jimmy Lim, uh, meeting with uh, the late, uh, uh, at the time he was the PAM president. So we were traveling together. So that's also uh, how you know I managed to get to know all these people from PAM. Uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, that's how uh, I started to open my eyes on all the different possibilities that I can do, uh, you know, when talking to all these uh, uh, very famous architects. Huh? Okay, uh, that's uh, how I started in traveling. And then in second year, um, my thesis uh, topic was Johor Bahru Civic Center. I mentioned just now that I'm from Johor, so I want to do something which is located near my state, you know, which is located in my state, which is Johor Bahru is the capital state. So I want to do a civic center in uh, in Johor Bahru, and uh, in order for me to gather uh, information, because one of my senior advised me that he said that you know you need to go and visit uh, other civic centers around the world, not only in Malaysia. Because at that time, Malaysia is not many, only one, maybe in Shah Alam, you have a civic center there. But, you know, uh, basically the rest are, uh, 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 are located overseas. Eh? And the word civic itself from 
come from a Greek words, you know, from a Latin words. Uh, that so it just shows that it's actually the buildings are located all uh, overseas. Eh, the, and it happens that uh, 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 the senior that advised me to do that because he do uh, royal palace. Uh, his thesis is actually royal palace, and he visited all the royal palace. Uh, around the region and all the states of Malaysia to come up with this thesis. So I, you know, I, I was inspired by him saying that, okay, I need to go. I need to trace back the history of uh, 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 Civic Center from its roots, which is in the uh, in Greece. I thought at that time, you know, Greek and Roman architect is in Greece. Uh, but of course, uh, another opportunity come across. Uh, I, uh, at that time, I uh, went, before I continue my part two, I was working for two years in architect urbanisma. That's when I met with architect Muzamil. At that time, he was uh, my junior, but because uh, he studied only for one year before his uh, continued study. So we left urbanisma together. I continued in UITM Shah Alam, and he went to uh, Oxford Brookes University in UK. So, and my urban study is in Johor Bahru, and his urban study is in Barcelona. <laughs> So, you know, I was like, oh my God, I said that, you know, I was, I mean, envy him because he, he will be able to travel uh, in Europe. He sent me postcard. So I say, okay, never mind, since you are there, I will, you know, because I've worked for two years, so I have some money for my flight ticket. So I say, but make sure that when I reach uh, UK, you're going to sponsor me, you know, I'm going to stay with you. And, uh, you know, uh, you're going to uh, help me uh, reduce my budget. Of course, I bring some money also, like, you know, just in case. So I'm just thinking that I just want to go to UK and, you know, maybe uh, look at some of the buildings there, uh, you know. Uh, and when I want to purchase my ticket, I go to a travel agent, which was also happened to be my friend, my school from, from uh, my friend from MRSM days, you know. He said that, oh, okay, you take Royal Jordan uh, Airline. They have a special offer uh three day four nights uh transit in uh amman jordan you know so meaning that on the way to london you can stop by uh in amman jordan for three day four nights uh, sorry uh sorry uh, three day two nights you just need to pay 200 ringgit which i think oh okay this is quite worth it and plus two tour uh, because this is part of the royal jordan um uh promoting jordan as a travel destination and in that brochure also they mentioned that uh, there's an ancient Roman cities uh, in Jordan. This is Jerash, they call it. So, and then part of the uh, part of the package tour that was uh, come together with this, you know, for 200 ringgit. So I just pay like, I think the ticket cost maybe 2,000 ringgit, 2,200. So I managed to get my return ticket to London. And at the same time, uh, three days, two nights at in Jordan. Uh, so that's, that's how uh, I started. And then, you know, when I reached, uh, of course, uh, Jordan, we went to Petra, we went to Dead Sea and, uh, you know, Jarash, study all those uh, Roman ruins and all that, then fly to London. From London, then my friend, uh, architect Muzamil, picked me up and take me to Oxford. Of course, being in Oxford, a beautiful city, you know, study all the architecture there. And then, you know, there are so many Malaysian uh, students studying there and the trick that my my friend Muzamil teach me okay every day I visited different houses meeting with different Malaysian you know and then he because at that time uh, he was participating in a competition you know like architecture student during a break also they don't take a break eh? I mean I don't know about students nowadays students those days are like that they never go back kampung eh? no balik kampung eh? so they always do something like competition and all that so this Muzamir also they are entering, I think, a British steel competition or something like which they won after that, you know. Uh, but at that time we don't know yet uh, that they are gonna win that uh, that competition. But I was so unhappy because you know I thought that he's gonna take me around, but instead he, you know, today he take me to his friend's house. Say, hey, okay, I have a friend coming from Kuala Lumpur. Can you take him showing around? So you know I met with Akita Mbong at that time. Akita Mbong uh, now is a lecturer in UITM. So, you know, he, he took me around. And then the next day, he introduced me to another student, Dr. Mastura. He's now a lecturer in UM. So, Dr. Mastura took me around. <laughs> so, you know, uh, every day, uh, there will be different people taking me around. Not only um, 
in Oxford, but also uh, uh, you know we take a train to London, to Bristol, to Isles of Wight, a lot of the place because I spent I think almost a month in Oxford because uh, UITM um, break is about one month, I think one month uh, something. Right? So that's how uh, I started when I travel uh, as a student. Oh, another thing, and then when I met with one person, you know, we went to, actually, she, uh, uh, she took me to uh, London uh, on the way to visit her sister at another university. I think this is uh, 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 Ida. Uh, Ida, she's uh, now a lecturer in UPN. <laughs> Uh, so she took me to uh, Natural History Museum of London because I want to do civic center. So Natural History Museum. So we went to visit Natural History Museum, and then there's a French embassy in front of the Natural History Museum. So she told me, if you want to go to France, you go and apply for your visa here. So I said I have, I have no plan to go to France because I don't have uh, uh, I don't bring enough uh, much money. So I said, oh no, no problem. Later, when we go back to Oxford, there's an agency who organizes travel for students. You can get discount. Just show your UITM student card. So, uh, okay, I say. So, I queue, get my visa. At that time, you want to go to France, you need to have a visa. Nowadays, no need. Eh? You don't have to have a visa. You can fly, uh, fly direct to, uh, to, uh, to France. So, then we go back to Oxford. You know, architect and Bong went to the library, uh, uh, get a book. Uh, for me, uh, what is it called? Um, you know, f as a guide for me to travel to Europe uh, using this book and bought a ticket. I think total about 80 pounds. I think 80 pounds. You can get a ticket from London, Paris, Paris, Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Brussels, you know, basically around Europe. So that's how I got my. Uh, you know, my first experience traveling alone in Europe, you know, on a bus. Uh, we take the bus, uh, it's a, like an open ticket, you know, you uh, cost about 80 pound. And then whenever you reach a country, uh, like in Paris, I stay in youth hostel, uh, I, using my student cards, so I get discount. Then when I'm in Brussels, also same thing. Uh, you know, in Amsterdam, also same thing, stay in youth hostel. First experience staying in uh, one room, like uh, 10 people maybe sharing a room and you know people from all over the world uh, this is also how i meet uh, uh with friends eh? uh, okay i think i've uh, i've, I've uh, talked so much about that experience so basically that's how it started as a student i've already traveled you know in fact i missed my flight <laughs> i missed my flight from uh from london coming back to uh, uh, uh kl Uh, quite fortunate at that time, the the, aerop uh, the, uh, the aeroplane company also made a mistake, so I don't have to pay additional. It's just that I have to reschedule my flight to the next week, you know. So I I extended my stay for another week in uh, London, uh, you know, before coming back to uh, Kuala Lumpur. So basically, that's that's why what my experience uh, while tra traveling, and because of that, I have become. Uh, brave you know to travel alone you know because uh, of the support that i got from all the friends you know in oxford university at that time so uh, so that's that's uh, how uh, how it started eh? so that's that's how you reduce your cost in transportation uh, one uh, I, uh, um, uh, like i said uh, get to know as many people as you can uh, then you can travel okay in this photo these are the friends that i met in uh, Saigon, the, the first one that I'm on the motorbike. Eh? <laughs> so that one, he took me around on the motorbike. We went to about one hour away from Saigon on a motorbike to visit this uh, team, uh, bamboo building designed by Von Tron, uh, architect Von Tron, you know. Uh, now, I think the building is already now demolished. Uh, you know, if you travel uh, traffic condition in Saigon, so that he took me on a motorbike to go there, so which I appreciate it very much. And then the photo that are, a photo of us four together. This is my host in Myanmar, uh, in uh, Myanmar. Uh, so he took me to. Uh, uh, they were rock climber. They were rock climber. Eh? So uh, and 
you notice the same person, eh? the one in photo uh, on the motorbike, because uh, he also travel. So when uh, we sort of like uh, uh, arrange that, okay, when we want to go to Myanmar, it happened to be the same time. So, you know, we can meet again in Myanmar, in Yangon, and stay at this, uh, uh, another person's uh, house. They, uh, the, the couple, you know, uh, they were a rock climber. Uh, so these are actually uh, how to save on accommodation where you stay with other people. And the third cost come from visa. Uh, so they, uh, these are the, the, the major costs when you are traveling. Eh? So that's uh, uh, what I said, transport. Uh, these are the things that you need to consider. Use budget airline. We have so much. You know, uh, Malaysia are quite fortunate. We are uh, located at the hub of uh, budget airlines. Huh? We have Malindo, we have A Asia, we have Firefly, we have a lot of budget airline which is very cheap. And then now we have Scoot Airline. Scoot Airline is also a budget airline that fly to Europe. So last time when I went to Greece, I took Scoot Airline also from uh, Changi Airport, go to uh, Athens. Uh, and then from there, took a lot of other cheap airline also. They have uh, Pegasus, they have so many, you know, I can't even remember. I just go to a uh, travel website, search for the cheapest flight ticket and buy the ticket. It's actually very cheap, like uh, sometimes 100 ringgit, 150 ringgit, just to <coughs> fly around Europe. Huh? My, my uh, flight to Athens actually cost me 900 ringgit one way, eh? from Kuala Lumpur to Athens, 900. Uh, but then, of course, I break my journey and all that. So that's uh, budget. And then group traveling. As I said, mentioned just now, when you travel, you, you find your group. My first time travel when I was in Jordan, you know, remember I mentioned that I won the, uh, I went on my way to UK. Uh, we went to Jordan. I met with these two Japanese girls. Uh, they, got, they have problems because they can't speak English. So they always uh, come across uh, some issues where they cannot explain with the Arabs, you know, because, uh, you know, they cannot speak Arabs, they cannot speak English, just use sign language. And also another person who was returning to Canada. So the four of us travel on a taxi, you know, so it's cheaper when you travel in a group. Uh, we, we book a taxi to go to the Dead Sea because Dead Sea is not part of the package. Yeah? So we went to the Dead Sea. Uh, of course, Petra is part of the package. Uh, Jarash also is part of the package. So that one is not an issue. And also, uh, uh, when we travel to, uh, this one is travel in Vietnam, travel with uh, friends, then uh, cheap when you, uh, instead of staying in a hostel, you can stay in a hotel, share, for you, share in a, uh, uh, in, in, in a room rather than, uh, so that's what I mean by group travel or pooling, uh, you pool your, your, your resources. And then don't avoid using uh, transportation. I mean, most of the time you just need to walk. You walk around. When you go in Saigon, you just walk around. You know, I, I, of course, some of the cities are not uh, pedestrian friendly. You know, like Saigon is not pedestrian friendly. But you will make do. You know, you will find out where to walk around the city, and it's quite interesting to observe all of these uh, things. Huh? Um, but most of the European countries are, you know, um, Rome, all these are walk. You can walk. Basically, you just walk. You don't need to take any transportation. Eh? So, okay, as I said, I've shared the, that's how you reduce the cost. Uh, instead of trying uh, uh, premium airline, you go for budget airline. Instead of traveling alone, you travel with the group. And instead of taking transportation, you, uh, you walk. Huh? Second one, accommodation. Accommodation, I said, stay with friends and family. When I was in UK, uh, it happens that my sister uh, followed uh, uh, her husband uh, doing uh, his PhD in Birmingham. So that's, that's how I plan to go to UK, stay in UK. Then from there, I fly to, at, uh, to other places. Uh, Second option is stay with strangers. I mentioned just now my concept of strangers. Strangers is uh, friends that you have not met yet. Uh, so, okay, how do you meet with these strangers? There are a website uh, uh, called Couch Surfing. 
there are a few actually. Couch surfing is just one of an example of uh, you know a pool of all these uh, traveler, which will offer their house for you to stay. And of course, they have their profile, just like your Facebook. You know, they have their uh, profile, and then you you it's not compulsory for you to accept or decline. And it's up to you whether you want to accept or decline their invitation. Sometimes when you put your uh, you post your travel itinerary on on the website someone will offer you uh, to host you. Eh? For example, in Xi'an, of course, I mentioned just now, we, I travel with, with student, Utah students, but I travel earlier, two days earlier than the students. So, you know, uh, I, I don't stay in a hotel. I stay with this uh, English teacher in Xi'an. He was from New Zealand. He teach English in China, in, in Xi'an. And uh, because uh, he also need international friends so that's why he joined this cow surfing so whenever there's a traveler or uh, you know coming to Xi'an he will offer a place to stay at his place uh, so I stay with him so and because he's also a traveler in China so he also took me around I mean I mean we went around also because he's also a, a, a visitor eh? and at the same time uh, another local Chinese in Xi'an as I mentioned just now they want uh, they get in touch with you because they want to practice their English, you know, so, uh, but uh, this guy did not offer to, uh, for me to stay at his house, but offered to take me around. So both of us uh, see him and he took us around and it's not like special space place or not. The one that you saw uh, the photo here uh, is actually a cooking demonstration. Amway <laughs> uh, uh, product. Because MWA just introduced in China, so they, uh, this guy is actually an MWA agent. So he took us to this uh, MWA demonstration, which is okay. We stayed there, I mean, stay for the demonstration for one and a half hour, and then he took us around for free. So it's all worth it. Huh? And then this is uh, uh, um, my host in Lahore, Pakistan. Uh, he was a professor in uh, a, uni a university, University management technology of Lahore, Pakistan. Eh? But he, he's not an architecture uh, lecturer. He's uh, lecturing in political science, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I stay with him and he also took me around. And the other photo here show me my host in Milan, uh, in Milan, Italy. So meaning that it's not only in Asian country, you can find hosts, you can also find hosts in Italy, in, uh, you know, uh, uh, in other places. Eh? Uh, this um, uh, host, he not only hosted me, I mean, uh, allow me to stay in his house, he also cooked for me, cooked a very nice pasta, you know, <laughs> Italian pasta. So that's, that's uh, I mean, and then the last thing is a charity and volunteer. Sometimes you want to stay uh, for free, there are some charity organization uh, in return that you need to do something for charity. I joined once uh, one activities in Saigon actually uh, teaching English also teaching English to often uh, so uh, you know they you join that and then you can stay for free and at the same time what you need to do is just teach uh, just teach uh, their students uh, English maybe for two hours like that so it's just like another lecture so you give lectures and then and then you know and then you also do this for charity so i think uh, it works uh, i think it's beneficial for both sides huh? so that's part of how to reduce your accommodation costs huh? uh, uh, of course the other options are stay in hostels and all that i think that those uh, uh, you guys know but i think save a lot more on uh, on if you're staying with friends and also staying with strangers uh, another one is which i will add to the cost is visa Visa cost, uh, uh, so how to reduce that? Choose a free visa country or country that allow a visa on entry. Uh, I mentioned just now Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan, no need visa. Kazakhstan, uh, need visa. <laughs> so I go to Kyrgyzstan because Kazakhstan need visa. So I don't go to Kazakhstan. Hey, I'm sorry, Turkmenistan. Tur actually, Turkmenistan is more beautiful because Turkmenistan where you have the... Uh, all those ancient, uh, you know, uh, Islamic architecture like uh, Samarkand is that's located in uh, Turkmenistan. But the visa cost is very expensive. 
Uh, so, you know, I choose Kyrgyzstan because no visa fees. Thailand, of course, no visa fees. Italy, most of country in Europe, no visa fees. Sofia, Sofia is in Bulgaria. Bulgaria also no fee, uh, no no fees. So you know you visit all this country and yet you you still have the same experience and you still can see some beautiful buildings, beautiful architecture. And uh, uh, the second part is travel with VIP. <laughs> okay, travel with VIP. I have experience traveling with a, a member of parliament from uh, Malaysia. Uh, we don't even need to have our passport. Uh, they, you just you know they transport that directly to wherever that they are traveling. Uh, so, because this one is, uh, uh, again, I said, way of you to uh, cut your cost. Uh, and then multiple entry visa. Okay, like uh, if you want to visit a place in China, so, you know, they have a multiple entry visa, which costs more than like single entry, but you save some, some money in terms of, uh, you know, uh, you pay like, you pay two for five visits, something like that. Lah. Uh, so multiple entry visa if you want to uh, you plan to travel to either india or china these are you know these two countries their visa is very expensive uh, i think uh, india is more expensive i think india is uh, about 400 ringgit the visa huh? so you need to really uh, plan your trip for the year meaning that if you want to go to india plan one year so you can have a multiple entry you can go to you know maybe jaipur you can go to delhi you can go to uh, you can go to uh, uh, Mumbai or something else you know, because they are big. Right? Uh, same also as China, you can go to Shanghai, you can go to Beijing, you can go to Xi'an uh, by using multiple entry visa. Okay. So these are the three tips uh, for you to save on your uh, traveling costs. And then the last part is how to travel for almost free. Uh, just now you still have to pay. Uh. This one is uh, almost free. So I said uh, here, uh, one competition, two conference, number three is university event. Okay, this I'm just putting an example. Uh, thesis of the year organized by Acacia. I think the next host is going to be in Thailand, Chiang Mai. I think I'm, I'm not so sure where is the host, but basically, if you want the competition, they will sponsor your trip. Huh? And then, then uh, PAM student, or could they have the Acacia competition also just close? Uh, uh, I mean, you know, the next Acacia gathering is going to be in Shanghai. So if you want that competition, uh, you also will get uh, to travel free to this uh, country. Uh, I mentioned just now competition organized by local with lucrative prizes. Okay, I've won uh, one uh, competition uh, with a free ticket, free return ticket to London. Uh, uh, so that's uh, organized by local with lucrative prizes. Eh? International competition, I mentioned uh, just now, uh, this photo here, uh, the winner of la last year, uh, Acacia competition, I think student from UITM and also from uh, UCSI, I think, uh, UCSI, uh, they got to travel to Dhaka, uh, fully sponsored by PEM, eh? uh, because they win the Acacia competition. And uh, the other photo is showing the bird, uh, uh, bamboo competition in Guangzhou, uh, where we send uh, six of our students, also uh, sponsored by the university because it's an international competition, and uh, we won third prize. Uh, that's also another way of you to uh, to uh, uh, travel almost free. And then your travel grant, travel grant. Uh, example just now, the one that I received, uh, Pam Travel Scholarship. Uh, now it's cost about five thousand. Where you able to travel, uh, travel any destination that you choose. So these are the things that uh, you can apply for uh, or you can uh, participate in. Second one is conference. Okay, this one, of course, some of you are doing your masters, maybe your PhD. You have a research paper, and then when if your paper being published, uh, of course, if you want to publish or present your papers, uh, you have to pay sometimes. You have to pay for the uh, for the conference. Eh? But if you are invited as the keynote speaker, for example, like uh, for example, I'm giving you an example here. Uh, the king, I was invited as a keynote speaker in Universitas Warmadewa. So basically, they will pay for my expenses because of the research paper that I did. And of course, uh, uh, in Manila, also I presented my paper, but that one I pay because 
I want to go to Manila. I've not been to Manila, so I pay. And then uh, in Jaipur also, uh, you know, there's a conference in Jaipur. Uh, being a, a conference participant, we pay also. One good thing about joining a, a conference like this, because usually the host will organize a special tour for conference participant. For example, uh, normally they don't allow you to enter uh, the parliament building eh, when we were in Dhaka, uh, Bangladesh. You know, there's a famous uh, parliament building designed by uh, Louis Ikhan. Eh? You, uh, well, if you are not, if you go there as a tourist, probably they don't have, they don't allow you to visit the parliament building. But because we go uh, as a conference participant, they organize a special visit to the uh, parliament building. So you will be able to uh, uh, view uh, Louis can work. So this is an example. Same also like uh, sponsored by Japanese Japan Foundation, Dokomomo. Uh, it's for free and also they organize a special visit, uh, special. So we we managed to enter the parliament of Indonesia as well. Uh, so these are the, uh, the advantage of attending conference. Huh? And then the last Uh, is the university so, so sometimes you have to pay sometimes you pay but at the very discounted prices because the uh, university will maybe subsidize some of the costs or totally free it depends uh, you know for certain event huh? and then we have joint program joint program like i'm showing here uh, one thing is uh, our joint studio program with tung Hai university so the student able to travel to uh, taiwan uh, you know and when they come to malaysia uh, they also uh, we we take them to Malacca and all that you know and reciprocate. And the other photo that show me with the uh, deans of uh, Faculty of Architecture uh, FSPU uh, UITM Shalam, we were invited to go to uh, Osaka University. I can't remember what's the name of the university because they were they have some joint program. Because I was a, a, a guest lecturer in UITM, not architecture program. This is more like a project management site. Eh? In Insha Alam, it's not in Puncha Alam. Uh, you know, so you know they also invited me to join the the visit. So that's uh, that's what uh, uh, what I mean by university organized event, and then university MOU partners event. This is meaning like a certain event. That for example, the uh, PAAU eh, that we had last year. It's a collaboration between a few universities that took, took turn to host this event. Uh, so last year, Utah was the host. So that's the photo of us taking uh, these delegates from India, from, you know, from other universities around the world to KLCC. So this is also, uh, of course, Malaysia. But when it comes to their university, when we send our students there, then they will have to take our students around. Uh, so these are uh, uh, another way of uh, you know traveling that uh, during your student times where you can uh, actually reduce the cost. Huh? Okay, I think that's the last thing, uh, the last uh, slides. Uh, you know, uh, I hope you are you have you you guys managed to get some tips and benefit from my talk. And uh, before I end up, so this is. Uh, photo of me in Myanmar. I think it's in, uh, not Yangon, uh, somewhere, can't remember what's the name of the place. Uh, what, what I want to share here is actually when you travel, you do not have to, uh, you know, you, you have to, I mean, if you dress like local, you will get a lot of benefits. You know, like uh, this one, because I wear uh, longi, the the kind play card, uh, the longy dress just like the Myanmaris. So I don't have to pay for entrance fee for the museums, uh, the temples, you know, because they thought that I'm local because I dress like local, you know. So this is another tips also that uh, some of you, maybe I was fortunate because my face when I'm in the Philippines, I can, uh, you know, I can be a Filipino and I'm in Indonesia, I can be like an Indonesian, you know. When I travel to Myanmar also, I look like a Myanmaris. So, you know, that's 
take use that to your advantage well like a local and they will treat you like a local and you pay local prices because uh, in some of this uh, country if you are tourists you will have to pay more uh, so i think with that i will end up my uh, my talk this uh, this round i hope you have benefit uh, many of you and i'll uh, return the floor to the mc thank you very much Thank you so much, Encik Muluk, for the wonderful talk. I hope everyone enjoyed it and gained many insights and perhaps even go traveling tomorrow. <laughs> if you have any questions... After the MCO. Just... <laughs> yes, after the MCO. <laughs> uh, so, if you have any questions, you can type it in the chat box. Uh, there's one question. The first question is actually from me, myself. So, oh, okay. my name is Janelle and I'm from UPM. So during this time of pandemic, traveling has become harder. What other ways can we experience architecture of different countries? Or maybe it's better to try traveling within our own country, Malaysia. Oh, okay. This one is quite interesting. Eh? You know that uh, a lot of the uh, countries in ASEAN is suffering. Their tourism industry suffer because uh, people are not allowed to travel overseas. However, it's different in Malaysia. Most of the hotels in Langkawi, in Port Dickson, in you know tourist area in Malaysia are full, because Malaysian took this um, take this advantage of uh, having uh, you know like sale because a lot of the hotel offer very cheap price for you to stay in their hotel. So I think it's better maybe to focus on local tourism. You travel to local destination because I'm sure there's a lot more uh, places that uh, you haven't been. I mean, there's another uh, things, you know, as an architect from Malaysia, sometimes when you travel, people will ask you certain things about certain places in Malaysia. But if you have not traveled to that place, for example, for some people who haven't been to Penang, eh, uh, being a world heritage city, so, you know, a lot of people have interest to, uh, uh, to ask you about Penang. But if you have not been there, probably you won't be able to answer their questions. Malacca, you know, uh, and also Kota Kinabalu, Kuching. All these uh, uh, cities uh, are very interesting and worth a visit. So I think uh, maybe during this MCO, use this opportunity of very low prices uh in some of the hotels not all the hotels there are still some hotels are very expensive in in langkawi yeah? uh, and in tioman island uh, in cerating in kota baru you know there's not uh there's a lot of places uh, that we can uh, we can go in uh in our own country so i think uh while uh, during this uh, mco uh maybe we should focus on uh local traveling first uh, in preparations of going overseas after the pandemic is over. Hmm. Oh, okay, another thing that I want to share, do you know that Kuala Lumpur uh, is, uh, uh, has the work of a lot of the international architects? You know, maybe not, may, not many of you also do not realize that Kuala Lumpur has the work of many, uh, you know, like uh, Norman Foster, Kenzo Tangi, uh, Cesar Pelli, uh, uh, you know, Louis Ikhan, all of them, their works are in uh, Kuala Lumpur and also in Penang. Uh, the Geodesic Dome, uh, who's that? Uh, uh, Buckmaster Fuller, you can actually see his work in uh, Komta Penang. And, you know, uh, there are some uh, uh, big shots architects also uh, has their work in, in Kuala Lumpur. So maybe, you know, you, you, you cover this and look for information uh, about uh, this uh, master architects who are in uh, his work is o o o already in Malaysia. Wow, never thought of that. Thank you. Okay. We have another question. So, hi, sir. I am Vinci from UCSI University. It was an interesting presentation. Do you have any low budget country recommendation that is worthy for architecture students to go? except Vietnam and Taiwan? Uh, low budget. Uh, Bangladesh, uh, like I said just now, uh, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, you know, uh, Geoffrey Bawa. 
uh, have you have a lot of work from Geoffrey Bawa in Sri Lanka. Um, uh, at the moment now, of course, there's no flight going to uh, Colombo, but this I'm talking about after the MCO. Huh? After the MCO, you probably want to consider Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, uh, uh, the visa also is not very expensive, not as expensive as India, uh, uh, but there are a lot of things to see also in Sri Lanka. My experience traveling in Sri Lanka, again, I'm use, I am use uh, cow surfing and I managed to get a host in Colombo, you know, and also one another state, uh, another city, uh, I think about maybe three or four hours on a bus, you know, stay with him. He's, he happened to be an engineer. So he took me around uh, 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 the, the area where he stayed. Uh, but I still would like to go again to Sri Lanka because, you know, of the safari. You know, you, you, you also get to go to the safari, uh, the elephant safari, uh, you know. Uh, and also the, the northern part where they have the uh, uh, famous uh, uh, Buddha, Buddha tooth or something like that, you know. Buddha to temple or something like that. But basically, I um, uh, haven't been to some of these places. And also in Colombo itself, there are some work by famous architect, uh, you know, like Moshe Shafdi. Uh, one of these buildings is actually in uh, in Colombo. Uh, another another country that you may want to consider is, um, of course, Indonesia, our neighbor. You know, you can go to Jakarta. Uh, I think uh, they have improved a lot in terms of the urban scape. Eh? Those days, uh, you have to like take transportation to travel from one place to the other. But now, I think they have they they are upgrading their infrastructure. So now you have more uh, a facility for pedestrian, and it's also interesting to see how they uh, how the uh, they they want to uh, cater for. Uh, for you know universal access and all that you know RAM and all that so this these are uh, uh, two countries that I would recommend uh, all of the students to consider of course uh, you know already that uh, uh, Yogyakarta uh, Bali of course Bali is another destination uh, but you know Yogyakarta Yogyakarta also is another place that I would recommend everyone to go because you have a Buddhist temple, the biggest Buddhist temple in Southeast Asia, which is the Borobudur. And at the same time, they have the biggest uh, uh, Hindu temple, ancient Hindu temple in uh, uh, in uh, Yogyakarta also, which is the Prambanan temple. Both are actually UNESCO World Heritage uh, Sites. All right. Okay, thank you for the recommendations. Uh, for now, there aren't any more questions before we end. Uh, I, I was the convener for the PAM Travel Scholarship uh, for the last uh, two years, I think, or three years. When we opened the uh, Travel Scholarship, we didn't receive many uh, applications. You know, and the scholarship worth five thousand, which is a lot. It will cover a lot of uh, places. Eh? And for some, I mean, uh, our last two years winner uh, won the uh, Pam Travel Scholarship. She's from UM. She used the money to uh, help the earthquake victim somewhere. You know, and then with uh, that research, she won another scholarship in. Uh, uh, Norman Foster Scholarship, I think, and then from there, uh, she do her internship in Spain. So basically, it opened up a lot of opportunity for her by, uh, by you know, uh, getting this uh, travel scholarship. And uh, this, the advantage of this travel scholarship, you can plan your own destination. It's, it doesn't specify where to go. You can go anywhere, you know. So that's the, so I hope that uh, next time, of course, this year we don't have any travel scholarship offered because of the pandemic. So I think uh, next year, probably we're going to uh, uh, offer it again. Usually we offer about two place, you know, two, uh, two a year. So you can write in your proposal. Uh, tell us where do you want to go? What do you want to do? You know, what are the area of uh, interest that you're going to study and how you're going to be able to contribute back 
to PAM, you know, in terms of maybe like uh, 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 organizing a webinar like this to uh, present your uh, work. Uh, so I think uh, that's what I would like to do because it has changed me a lot. I was fortunate because I got that chance of traveling uh, overseas when I was a student. And because of that, it connects me to a lot of other things, you know, in, in, uh, increase my uh, confidence, my networking. Networking is another thing, you know, at that time, because you guys are students, you know, you don't know what they're going to be in the future. You know, some of them may be a politician and become a minister, you know, <laughs> among your colleague or someone that you met, you know. So, and it will work to your advantage maybe in the future. Uh, you know, so that's that's why I want very much like to encourage you to travel and use this advantage of being an architecture student because you are exposed to a lot of things. You know, uh, when you're presenting your work, it's like uh, improving your uh, communication skills as well. So these are uh, the uh, skills that requires you when you travel, as, you know, like uh, when you travel, so you need to communicate with people. So you find whatever avenue possible for you to communicate to that person, not only using language, sometimes using sketches. And because you have your, you always have your sketchbook with you, huh? you can end up that sketching the things for people to uh, to understand what you are trying to look for. So, okay, I think that's, uh, uh, that's uh, what I can uh, leave uh, uh, to uh, students, uh, uh, to everyone. Thank you. So we have come to the end of this seminar. Thank you once again to Injit Muluk for the wonderful talk. And thank you everyone for joining us for today's online lecture. We hope you enjoyed it. Keep in touch with our MASA's Instagram and Facebook page for the next one. And until then, have a nice day and we will catch you next time. Bye-bye.